Marian Head is an award-winning author of Revolutionary Agreements, A Personal Path to Peace on Earth, and a contributor to the forthcoming uh, Soulful Leadership, A Spiritual Path to Health, Wealth, and Love. Marian's calling is to be love in action, wherever inspired to serve. In addition to her work inside the US Senate and consulting for the Fortune 100 companies, she served as a co-facilitator for the first global forums of spirituality and parliamentary leaders on human survival in Oxford and Moscow. Marianne founded Agreements Institute to certify spiritual leaders to demonstrate and teach the power of conscious agreements. She resides with her husband, Glenn, in Kwai, where she enjoys exploring spaciousness. Marianne, thank you so much for being on our panel. And your topic for today is Conscious Agreements for Sacred Relationships. Over to Marianne. You'll have to unmute. Over to Marianne, please unmute. Thank you. Well, then I can share my aloha with you now. Aloha. It's a joy to be contributing to World Unity today by sharing what I've been learning over the past 30 years uh, that may serve you. And what I've been learning is that the quality of the agreements that we make is directly proportional to the quality of our lives and especially our relationships, including the relationship we have with ourselves. Our success in business, as in most aspects of life, is dependent on our relationships, as we just heard from Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. And because all life is sacred, all relationships are sacred. When we know and apply this in the business world, we can call it practical spirituality. In 1985, shortly after my honeymoon and a few years after my husband, Glenn and I were doing what some would call conscious business consulting. We invited some of our clients and fellow business owners to our home to explore this question. How could we support each other to live our highest values in all aspects of our lives and especially at work where we spent most of our time? At that very first gathering of what became known as the Geneva Group, we began to develop a set of agreements that would help to guide us in living those highest values. We decided to meet again the next month for a full day and the next month and the next month for 20 years. At the beginning of every of our, one of our gatherings, we would do a, a heart centering attunement and then we would read the agreements aloud and talk about how they were influencing our lives and the lives of those we worked with and lived with. Over the years, as we evolved, the agreements evolved. The revolutionary agreements are my version of the essence of those Geneva Group agreements. They self-organized into what I call three pillars of a good life. And you can see them on this banner behind me. They're truth, acceptance, and gratitude, where truth is being the truth of who you are, your authentic self. Acceptance is accepting others for who they are. And well, gratitude, <laughs> that's feeling and expressing that appreciation we have for every precious moment of this sacred life on our beautiful planet. So what are these agreements that guided me and others to enormous success in business and at home and in the world? Well, in the pillar of truth, they are, I agree to live my mission. I agree to speak my truth with compassion to look within when I react and to keep doing what works and change what doesn't. I'm excited today to tell you about some of the results that people are getting that they've shared with me. And I will, although results are in all aspects of life, I will focus today on business. So let's start with the director of systems and operations of a Fortune 50 company who was stressed out by his underperforming 
team and didn't know how much longer he was going to be able to stay in this job. A consultant gave him a copy of the Revolutionary Agreements book. Inspired, he engaged his team in creating their own agreements, which is a great idea. And later that year, he wrote, and I quote, we have been functioning as a cohesive team with our new agreements for seven months now. And to say that this core organization has turned itself around would be an understatement. I look back and remember upper management laughing at my one year goal. Back then they did not know about the power of using the agreements. I can say that I am in love again with my career and assert that the agreements are the best tools for stress reduction I have ever found. Well, I love that word love. The second agreement is I agree to speak my truth with compassion. And it was while practicing this agreement that I discovered why some people lie, even if honesty is a high value of theirs. Why? Because we all have competing values. And sometimes job security, for example, takes precedence over honesty. Well, here's a frightening example of that. In 2015, an airline industry report revealed that some co-pilots didn't even tell their pilots the truth when a fatal accident could be a result. They were concerned they might be considered insubordinate. As spiritual leaders, we need to ask ourselves how we can help people feel safe and secure in their connection to all life in such a way that serving life itself becomes our highest value. Here's how my friend Mark Porteous does it. It's similar to what Teresa shared with us already. He helps mission-driven entrepreneurs to connect with their soul tribe, and that includes their partners and their customers. Years ago, he told me that the revolutionary agreements give him a structure for being the change he wants to see in the world. Thank you, Mahatma Gandhi. Rather than keeping that to himself, however, he encourages his business partners and his customers to learn these agreements and he claims them as the constitution for his business. And this is his way of supporting people to live their highest. And then Reverend Marty McMain, who was senior minister of a large church in Boulder, Colorado, she shared these agreements with her spiritual women's, her women's spirituality group for 12 weeks, one agreement a week. And then she took them on a board retreat where they adopted the ones that resonated with them. And then she gave one sermon on each of the agreements. So that was 12 sermons. As leaders of organizations, we can influence many who influence many by sharing the tools that help us to be our best selves and to serve life. So Marty went on to spread the word even further by writing a beautiful book called Living Grace, Spiritual Growth in the Everyday World. The final agreement in this pillar of truth is I agree to keep doing what works and change what doesn't. Well, during the time I was building a hugely successful business, one of my business partners said to me, isn't our work so easy, fun, and rewarding? Well, fun, yes, because I got to work with her and other friends. Rewarding, definitely, because we were literally saving people's lives and getting paid a lot to do it. But easy, no. No, the work seemed hard to me. And I told her that. She said, really? I think it's easy. Well, later that day, I thought about this. We do the same exact work. How could she think it was easy? And I think it was hard. I realized that my whole life, I have always thought that my work, regardless of how much I loved it, was hard. So where did that come from? Ah, work was hard. I, I learned that growing up. And I was proud of being a hard worker. <laughs> so. In that moment, I decided it was time for me to experience that work and life was easy. I knew a little, about how, a little bit about how we created neural pathways in our brains by repeating the same thoughts over and over again and creating a kind of a rut. And I was in that rut. And I also knew that if I stopped thinking those same thoughts, 
work is hard, work is hard, that it would eventually weaken that neural pathway and maybe even break it apart. So the next day, I decided to begin creating a new neural pathway. And everything that was easy, I reinforced by speaking out loud. That was easy. And it started when I opened the sliding glass door to my lanai and it went whoosh. And I just said out loud, that was easy. And then I went into the kitchen and I cracked an egg in the frying pan and oh, it was beautiful. I said, that was easy. And I just kept repeating that all day and all week long. And I, well, it was like a miracle how everything started showing up easier. I wrote a blog about it because I didn't want to keep it to myself. And it seemed like such a great way to build a new habit. One of my readers sent me this. That was easy. And then I had other reinforce, another reinforcing voice. Oh, yes, it's good. So now that things are easier for me, when something hard shows up, I can consider whether it's an old habit showing up or maybe I should think about whether I actually want to be doing whatever that is that shows up for me. Maybe it's just not the right time. Okay, moving on to the pillar of acceptance. The agreements are, I agree to listen with my heart, to respect our differences, to resolve conflicts directly, and to honor our choices. Now, I won't have time today to share a story for each of these with you to share the results, but you can, if you'd like to know these results, you can go to the website revolutionaryagreements.com where I've captured some of the results that people have shared with me, or you can read the second edition of Revolutionary Agreements. And if you like this poster and you'd like to be able to read it without somebody sitting in front of it, you can also get yourself a free download of it at freeposternow.com. Okay, so Gail lives in a neighborhood of 24 homes. They share common food gardens, hiking trails, and community buildings. They make a lot of decisions together, these 24 households. And over the past 20 years, every time they start one of their many business meetings, they begin by reading their agreements aloud. So as I read what Gail shared with me, Think about meetings that you've been in where there are important issues to discuss and you know there are going to be people of differing opinions. Well, I'm speaking to spiritual people here, so you may already be there. You probably are already there, but here's what she wrote. Since working with the agreements, I notice I have fewer reactions to differing opinions and I am able to more quickly stop myself before laying blame on another. The agreements remind me to look within for the source of my issue. Once I discover that source, my reaction usually dissipates. Then I can relax and respect our differences. Practicing these agreements virtually eliminates negative gossip in our community. And the benefits of more compassionate communication and deeper relationships are deeply gratifying. So finally, in the pillar of gratitude, I agree to give and receive thanks, to see the best in myself and others, to look for blessings in disguise, and finally, last but definitely not least, to lighten up. So I'll share a short story by Lori, a corporate executive coach. I'm gonna read this from my book. Um, here she goes, one of my business clients was concerned about losing productivity at work. At a closer look, we discovered that the root of the problem was at home. His insistence that his wife support him by acting in ways he deemed right was draining his energy. I suggested that he use the agreement to see the best in myself and others and requested, why don't you talk with your wife about only what she's doing right for the next week? He did so, and the result was nothing less than transformative. Both his relationship with his wife and his productivity at work experienced a dramatic turnaround. First and foremost, these agreements are agreements with ourselves. Practicing these agreements ultimately leads to the one agreement. I agree to be myself 
with a capital S to signify that we are a divine gift from our creator. And the way we live our lives is a gift to all creation. Each of us is a cell in the body of humanity forming the larger self. May these agreements serve you on your journey as we awaken to our unconditional loving unity consciousness. Namaste.